welcome. Thanks for being here. It's great to be here. Thanks, Kath. Now, listen, you founded a company called TimberTech some time ago. Tell me, what does TimberTech do? TimberTech washes, protects, and maintains cedar properties. Yeah. It's not the most exciting job in the world, <laughs> but really I've been doing not. it for 25 years now, and I love it. So where did you get started? Like, how does a person get started in business? Where did you start? Well, I started very early. I remember my first foray was when I was nine. Oh, wow. And it was at the local pet shop. And I used to work there on a Saturday morning, and we had a local sawmill that used to bring in these great big bags of sawdust. They were literally, I was only nine, so they seemed huge. They're yeah. probably about six <laughs> <weight>. yeah. <laughs> I, probably, yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't a tall nine either. <laughs> but these bags seemed massive. And my job was to go in there on a Saturday morning and then break them down into smaller bags yeah. so you could then sell them to people for pet, you know, for their own, for their hamsters and rabbits and, yeah. and everything else. Okay, so, so that was when you were nine. And yes. You, and you've yeah. done a bunch of different things, like an entrepreneurial spirit, you know. And I didn't realise I was. You know, it wasn't until I got later in life and realised that I been an entrepreneur my whole life. I've yeah. never had a job for more than 18 months. Wow. And that was when I arrived in New Zealand back in 91. I worked for 18 months for the warehouse over here. Yeah. And that was my longest ever career yeah. whilst working for somebody else. Other than that, I'd worked for myself since I was nine years old. So why did you keep creating things? You've done a heap of stuff. Like you've had a million lifetimes, haven't you? Yeah. I love shiny objects. <laughs> like there's always something that, yeah. And it doesn't matter what it is. And I'll be in a conversation with somebody. They'll say something. I'll hear an opportunity and the next thing we're having a conversation about how that could look. Yeah. And a lot of those things I've got excited about myself. So whilst managing and running TimberTech for the last 25 years, it's really allowed me to go and play in many other different fields as well with different people yeah. in different enterprises. Yeah. Mm. So do you think that creativity has served you well? Some people will be shiny objects and it means literally that they can't conclude anything. Yeah. I'm careful because what I used to do was very much that, unfinished projects everywhere. Yeah. But I got to a point where I realized that that wasn't ever gonna get me anywhere. Yeah. If I were coaching somebody else, I'd say, the first thing you need to do is finish that project. Yeah. Yet there I was with these unfinished projects myself. Yeah. So I've surrounded myself with really great people. Yeah. And that's been the key. Right, okay, so great people, that's an important, mm. yeah. It's probably, the, for me, the most important, finding people that, that love doing what I don't like doing and then I can do what they don't like doing, which is what I enjoy doing. And often the, the talking to people, I'm not good at crossing T's and dotting I's. It's not a natural way of being for me. So it's something that I've disciplined myself over the years. Mm. But if I can find somebody who likes crossing T's and dotting I's, then great, there's, there's the opportunity for a great partnership. Yeah, so actually one of, the, one of the foundations of business will be to find the right people to support you. Critical, okay. yeah, critical aspect for me. So it hasn't all been roses your entire business career, has it? No, 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 and, and I think that's part of what makes where I'm at now as, as fun or as exciting as it has. I've, I, about 11 years ago, the GFC literally nearly wiped me out. Yeah. I was that close to being bankrupt working really closely with the banks, with the IID, to yeah. try and manage myself through that process. Yeah, so the global financial crisis basically hit a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. And I was not well set up. One of the things I hadn't done well 12 years ago was, was set the businesses up in a way where they were separate and distinct from me. So right. my business and my, all my family and everything was all intertwined and had been that way forever. Yeah, all and the eggs in one basket. Literally, yeah. yeah. So when one, yeah, and it was that domino effect. and. You know, I look back on that now and it was a very valuable and costly exercise, yeah. but really did set me up nicely for where we're at right now. Yeah. What did you learn from it? The critical aspect for me was putting in the systems and processes to make sure that the businesses themselves yeah. were looked after. Yeah. Whereas before I had myself been looked after by the business, now the business itself exists as its own entity. So yeah. I look after the business it's, and then the business takes care of me rather yeah. than me first. Yeah, that actually would be very common. A lot of people start in their own business and it's just them. Yeah. It's just I am the business and the business is me. Especially in New Zealand. Yeah. So many small to medium sized businesses in New Zealand and where we exist here is like when we work we get paid, when we don't work we don't get paid but we still think we're in a business. Yes. And that was how it was for me. I worked very hard, I earned good money. When I wasn't working I didn't earn any money. Yeah. Now having a business, people all work in the business. And so if I'm not working, the business is still operating yeah. and is still making money without needing me. Yeah. So how did you move past that global financial crisis stage? Well, we literally had to start again. Wow. So my business partner and I, or my colleague, we were working together there. We were out knocking on doors 
in the evenings to try and generate work for the following day. Wow, so you, you literally, you mean literally, I'm out there, I'm knocking on the doors, I'm trying to generate the business. Yep. So plenty of people would be not willing to do that. Yeah, and many weren't. We had, there were 12 of us working in the business when it came through. We had 10 franchises throughout the country yeah. and only two of them survived. Yeah. The others just weren't willing to do to go right back to the basics, which was you know, yeah. asking for the work. Yeah, and I guess there's something in there. You know, if you're trying to extract the principles of what make businesses successful, what, what do you think makes a person successful in business? Well, sticking to your knitting. Yeah. One of the things is getting clear on why you're doing what you're doing and then doing it to the best of your ability. Sticking to your knitting. Yeah, I got that from a du an old Dutch guy, Eddie, uh, from Dad's Pies, very successful um, businessman. And I met with him probably 20 years ago and it was one of the things that stayed with me. Yeah. He said, like, Literally, because making pies, I mean, how much, how hard can that be? Except this guy now is, you know, doing pies all over the world. And yeah. I thought, yeah, I like that. And he said, stick to your knitting. And I, I got the concept of doing what you do really, really well. So, and we do. And Timber Tech is now, it, throughout the country, will be the leading experts in timber restoration and refurbishment. Yeah. Not as exciting as pies, I'm sure, but, you know, <laughs> along the same vein. But more slimming. That's what you thought, <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. And then the second thing I think is working in teams. One of my passions is football, yeah. soccer, as yeah. you call it here, but football. Yeah. And, and I do liken the two things, working with people who they turn up early for work or they, they stay later. The same deal applies at football. You know, the guys that turn up early help carry the stuff out. They work hard, they train hard, they play hard. And then afterwards you can socialize with them. That's been the, the most of the people that work with me. One of the, my colleagues has been 20 years, 117, 112. When you find the people that you work well with, then you keep them around you yeah. and, and, and everybody wins. So Mark, if you had one final tip for us on being successful in business, what would it be? It's got to be about football. <laughs> so, no, it's about business. It's about football. <laughs> it's always about, it always comes back to football. You know, you walk over the line and for 90 minutes, yeah. you literally give it everything you've got. And I think the same applies to business. You play like your life depends upon it. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much, Mark. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks.